Section 3.3 talks about solving systems of linear inequalities. We've already practiced graphing a linear inequality in Unit 2. That's, the, that's where you plot your dotted or solid line and then you shade it. Now we're going to talk about solving a system, which is two of them. And if you notice in example one, I have two different linear equations that we're going to solve at the same time. And basically it works just like we did in unit two. We're going to graph both of them on the same grid, and then we're going to talk about where the solution lies. Now, the first thing we need to do, probably the first step, you want to make sure you write the equations in slope intercept form. This will probably make our life a lot easier. So if I'm going to take the first equation, you're going to notice I'll just add 2 to both sides. And I get y is greater than or equal to 3 halves x plus 2. Now the second equation, there isn't a y value. So if we recall back from our unit 2 lessons, an equation that has x equals is a vertical line. It told us that this is linear, so therefore we know it's a line, therefore it must be vertical. Well, now, very simply, I'm going to plot both lines. I'm going to start with this one, which I'm going to do in green. It says y is greater than or equal to 3 halves x plus 2. 2 is the y-intercept value, and my slope is 3 halves. So I'm going to rise 3 and go over 2 and up up 3 and over 2 and my line goes pretty much through those points and I check to see that it's greater than or equal to so I know it is a solid line so I'm going to draw a solid line right through my graph now the next part is the shading and as I mentioned in unit 2, I'm going to, I notice that the point 0, 0, which I'm going to put a little dot right here, a little x, 0, 0 is not on the line, so I'm going to put 0, 0 into the equation, and basically I end up with y, or I'm sorry, I, 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Is that a true statement? Well, no, it's not. So therefore, we shade above the line, and I'm going to do a very good job of shading for reasons which... Uh, I will show you in just a second. So all answers that are up here are solutions to that particular inequality. Now the second one I'm going to do in red, well, it's a vertical line at 3. Now I do notice that the symbol is less than. There is no equal to part, so therefore it is a dotted line at 3. So I'm going to draw a vertical dotted line at 3. Now again, I'm going to test the point 0, 0 to see if it works. Well, if I put 0 in there for x, is 0 less than 3? Yes, it is. So therefore, the point 0, 0 works, and I'm going to shade like this. All this area to the left of my vertical dotted line. Now, the question is, where is the answer to the problem? The answer is the region with both shadings. The place where both red and green shadings, that's the solution. So I'm going to draw that in blue. It's a dotted line there, and then it's a solid line here, and everything up here inside that blue region, that is the answer to my system of equations. Now, how would that solution change if the inequality signs were different? Well, the shading would end up in a different area. So let's say instead of greater than or equal to, this one was less than or equal to. So I'm going to cross that out and less than or equal to. Well, then we would have shaded the other side of the line, which I'm going to do in black. 
The other side of that line would have been over here. Now, just by changing that symbol, now our overlapping region would be where I'm drawing this triangle right here. This blue shaded area is where the shadings would overlap if we had changed the symbol to less than or equal to. So you need to be aware of where the shadings overlap. Now, I would like you to try this problem on the next one on your own. Here it is. Please stop the video, and when you're ready, begin and check your answer. Well, first thing I notice, I need to get this in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to minus 2x to both sides, and I get y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. Well, let's graph that. Well, I've got the green pen in my hand. The y-intercept is 4, and the slope is negative 2, so I go down 2 and over 1, down 2 over 1 and I check my symbol and I notice it is less than or equal to so it is a solid line basically it goes something it's kinda of hard on the smart board kinda of something like that if I shade it in a little bit something like that now I gotta test the point zero zero which is right there. So if I put 0 in for y and 0 in for x, I get is 0 less than or equal to, this cancels out, is 0 less than or equal to 4? Well, yeah, it's true. So therefore, the shading goes all on the side where 0, 0 is. It really helps if you do these with a couple of different colors, so it's, it's much easier to see where your shadings are and where your final answer is. The second one, I'm going to shade this in red. Obviously, we got a minus 3 to both sides. So you get y is greater than x minus 3. So my y-intercept is at negative 3, and my slope is 1. So I go over 1 and up 1, over 1, up 1. And I notice that my symbol is only greater than, so therefore it is a dotted line. Something like that. Now I test my point zero, 0, and I get a 0 greater than negative 3. Well, yes, it is. So therefore, the side zero, 0 works again, which would be this area right here. All where zero, 0 is. Therefore, the final answer to this problem is the area where the shadings overlap. Well, that would be from this line, this solid line right there, to where they intersect, which is this dotted area here, and everything in between. So all this area in blue would be my final answer because that is where the shadings intersect. And that wraps up Section 3.3. If you have further questions, please make sure that you ask uh, during class.